So to start off, Big Gucci is going to be running the nickel through 3-5. We've got this guy right here. This guy often comes into blitz. This guy comes into blitz. And he'll audible from nickel through 3 to nickel through 5 wide. So it's kind of an old friend coming back and haunting us yet again. So the very first drive, I already talked about this. It's the most important drive ever. Literally ever. Now we already know that John Beast is in Washington. Very first play of the game. He has clear out FLN. So we can say we can prepare for gun tie. We can prepare for a bunch of tight end. We can prepare for bunch. We can prepare for ad catch. We can prepare for more clear out. We can prepare for a lot of stuff in this game. And it's important that you understand the differences in bunches. West Coast, you're not seeing as much. You're seeing basically anybody that's using bunch. They are in Washington. Very often in Washington. I'd say a good 90% of the time. Now. This is an interesting formation. I want to break this down. How I'd go about defending empty sets. First off, when I am defending empty sets, you, it gets really tough to be able to come out in dollar. Although I would say come out in dollar 99% of the time, especially if you know they can audible over to gun tight. They can audible over this empty bunch. They can audible over to bunch tight end. You can actually play that very well in the dollar defense. But what's really difficult about this is because we have a compressed set on this side. This guy right here, he can't block. So I already know that I can send these guys off the edge and I'm getting pressure. I know that for a fact. Now, what makes this 3-3 Cub, is technically what it's called, so good is both these guys can be on contains and that's what makes blitzes good. Any blitz that you can have a loop contain is great because it gets past your running back. Now, again, because this is five wide, I know that slot, I believe it's a running back technically can't block. The same thing when he motions that guy in, neither one of them can block because they're in a receiver stance, which is important information for us because we know if they cannot block, our blitz is coming home and all we got to do is take away their first read. This is something that Skimbo preaches a lot. Pause right here. Skimbo preaches a ton, take away their first read, and as long as your pressure gets home, the defense is it's gonna work and that's how Madden 23 is kind of going back into so again go back into this empty bunch we know this guy can't block so we blitz this guy off the edge blitz this guy off the edge this is our user right there and all we have to do is just take away his first read and the pressure's going to get home now unless there's some magic juju that he knows in this particular formation somehow the pressure's not getting there quick enough but right there they'll check down wheel routes this is the name of the game this year as well wheel routes are very very tough to defend there are ways to go about doing it but you have to be very careful about shading down which is by the way the way you go ahead and take wheel right now a lot of people are going to say that is a terrible read man 23 it's not <laughs> any other Madden, that's a terrible read but a man 23 that's an open read now this is the formation i'm talking about right here and this is why i'm either, i don't know I don't really like running I don't I wouldn't want to run three through five wide against this because the possibility of them being able to audible over to this bunch open tight end. Now as long as you know the gap shoots with a dollar, you're gonna be fine. But I would highly suggest if you guys are gonna be facing a Washington that you have dollar in your defense. If you're running a Kansas City and four six or multiple D, those are the three playbooks you need to run because you need to have dollar to be able to go into at any given time, especially if they're audible. And we know now he has five wide. He has bunch open tight end. And then he has bunch. And then he has also what was the other one? He has gun tight. So we know for a fact. All of this leads to us having to deal with the Washington tour from this five wide bunch to bunch open tight end to bunch to get gun tight. It's quite a headache and there are a ton of different routes that he's going to go ahead and utilize. Now, one thing that he did interesting right here, this last play, not this one, he's got a claw block. Now, there's a difference in a pressed claw block and a non-pressed claw block. If this, claw, if this guy were here, say he was in a pressed claw block. The press claw flat's not going to get back to about 20 yards. So we have a claw flat not press. So this is a guy right here. He is at a 15 yard line. He at his maximum depth before he says, screw it, I'm done, is about 20 yards. So he'll go about this deep without zone drops. And that is if you don't press. If you press, he you take off five yards. Okay, so or I guess depending on how far it is, it's about seven yards. You take off seven yards from how far back he's going to go. So instead of 20, he'd drop back to about 15, 13, 12, somewhere around there. So again, going into the gun tight, the number one play I have to worry about this is quick snap play. So the last time he did it, this guy, it's like, I believe it's PA cross. This guy runs an inside breaking route. This guy runs like some post flag route. This guy runs a crosser and this receiver runs a interesting corner. And then this guy stays in. To go ahead and block but in this case this is going to be z spot so we can pretty much ignore that altogether. now he flips the play right here 
I don't want to talk about that quite yet because this is more catered towards tight offset tight end. But when you, they click onto their running back, it's very difficult to know if they're flipping the player or if they're motioning the running back across. It's almost impossible to know what they are doing. Makes It's a headache. It's just another headache. But again, you see that more so on gun tight offset tight end than you do in gun tight. So on defense, in this situation, third and 19, I 100 like if you if you play coverage right here that is the stupidest play call you can ever make now at the same time talking like simulation football realistic football most people are going to be expecting a blitz and so you pick and choose in this situation but you you can't rush three you can't just rush these three down linemen right here because they're it's just never going to get home especially when you're running get pinched like yeah, it's just not. And I believe he might have edge protector. He might have lifeguard on these two guys. I'm not entirely sure what he has. So, yeah, we kind of got to just guess right there. So, he blocks his running back. He sees this little icon right here. This tells him, okay, this guy's coming on a blitz. This is clearly the user right there. And so, yeah, in this situation, send five. If he wants to go five out, you send five. There's no question. But right here, again, because it's third and 19, emotions is running back in. This is where it's a chess game. It's a mind game. <coughs> In this case, the emotions is running back in. I, I'm, if, this is what I would do. I would run a cover three. So I'd go ahead and put this guy into middle third, outside third, outside third. And then I would take this corner right here and I would actually put him into a cloud flat because it's third and 19. He will play to the first down marker more or less. And then I'm individually pressing this guy because this tight end can't block and bunch. And I'm going to take this nickel corner. I'm blitzing him off the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and just send the dogs. So this is what I would personally do in this situation because we've got the claw pot to take away the sticks. We've got a cover three. We've got this outside third to take away the Kaiser out. If he motions this running back out, I'll man up the safety to him. But right here, you're going to see. I don't, I don't understand why Gucci didn't send more pressure. It's kind of stupid. Right there, gets super lucky. Like, he had a touchdown, and luckily holds him to three. That, I would say that was not good defense. He just got super fortunate right there. They got the shed at the last second because John, Be has, John Beast very easily had a one-on-one -on -one ad catch. So, again, pay attention to this. So, I'm going to go uh, – I won't go back for this one, but just pay attention how long it takes this three-man rush to get through. This is why three-man rushes are dead. Even if he blitz or user, I don't know what it is about this game. It just – it dies off, but – the mixture of the 335 wide. So he takes this linebacker, he drops him into a curl flat. So we got this curl flat right here. Uh, I'm not sure what he did. I'm assuming he probably manned the other linebacker up to his I, I wasn't I wasn't actually paying attention. I'm not gonna lie right there. I'm not I have no idea what he did with the other linebacker. I wasn't looking at all. But again, we see how he's audibling from 33 to nickel 33 cub or 335 wide whatever you want to call it potato potato it's the same thing just a different name i don't know why they did that now my motto in the madam mastermind discord server is the lab work without the guesswork and part of that is having defensive schemes that take pro player setups and teach you how you can break those down and absolutely put them in a bag so if you want to be able to come home get onto a game and shut down your opponent on defense check out the two paypal links in the description below one gets you access to the discord server the other one gets you access to monthly coaching as well as everything else in the discord server links are in the description now let's get back into this video so first and ten i want to break this down and talk about what i'm doing in this situation so first off we have to pay attention to one the time two the score three where we're at four what down it is and what down in distance it is so in this situation, I believe Gucci gets the ball. If I remember correctly, Gucci is going to get the ball in the half. So you want to make this a super long drive. You don't want to give up even three points in this situation. So at this rate, blitz both these guys off the edge. And this is this is always your user. Okay, if you're using nickel 335 wide, this is almost always your user. If by chance you think there's a even a slight chance they block their running back you could do the following you could blitz all linebackers and if you press 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 these all this guy right here will mug the gap you can use this guy stand over the tackle or, or the guard whoever you want to and just pull their attention away by blitzing and then looping around and going back into coverage or option number two so uh, this is the second option number option number two this is where things can get tricky and what i would actually do 
is I would go cover three right here. Cover three with this guy in a hard plat, and then I'd be using this dude. Now, that's if they block their running back. This is most likely what I'd do in this situation, but I think it's a better decision in this case to go ahead and use this guy that's in the middle. As you can see right there, this is what I'm talking about. This is why loops are so powerful. You see how that running back is ignoring him altogether? One-on-one -on -one coverage, that's a good throw. And man, 23, you're going to go ahead and just ag him. That's what I was talking about. Really just just bad 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 defense bad defense you got to make sure the pressure's home and kind of going back to this whole idea is if they're going to gun bunch the best way you could probably go about defending that because he blocked his running back right there as we were predicting talk about predictions right here is what you could have done to have prevented that now he doesn't have any deep zone kills which is an issue because deep zone kills it would work in this way is to have put a deep half on this side of the field so then when he would have ran vertically this deep half would have been over the top and then you could have really got crazy you could have shaded down and then you just have to pay attention to the tight end so you'd have inside leverage and you'd have over the top leverage so at this point he's throwing it in between two defenders and you're forcing his hand so a really good way to go ahead and play ag defense is you play two man under that's that's pretty much the name of the game again right there the pressure's not getting home and this is just looking really really bad for gucci this is not how you want to end a half even when you get ball at half you want to be up you 100% want to be up. Now, this is a defense I've been running for quite some time. This is the way I like to play inside like the five, inside the seven, just like, you know, the short goal distances is my safeties. I'll drop them into hook curls. So these are both hook curls right here, hook curl right here. And this is kind of where it varies what I'm going to do. If I'm going to blitz, you better make sure this blitz gets home. Because the way I play this defense is I often have these guys in cloud flats, this guy in the cloud flat backed off. So then it takes the underneath, but then cloud flats, you know, they can go ahead and rally and play the flats. But you got to make sure this blitz gets home. Because otherwise, say this guy runs a corner out. That corner out, yeah, it kills you. Same thing with this side. This corner out, ooh ow that's going to kill you as well because again you don't have any deep zones but this is just a variation of what i like to do another thing you do is put instead of these guys into cloud flats put them into outside quarters same thing with this guy just another variation outside quarter instead kind of potato potato you got to pick your poison but right here if you're going to send the blitz you got to make sure this pressure gets home it has to get home if it doesn't he's you're giving up a dot as you can see right there, the pressure does not get home. He picks it up, and what happens? He gives up a dot, just as I was telling you guys. So, right here, Gucci manages to keep the score ahead, but this is getting really risky. Now, we finally get to see a little bit of his play art. Now, this is an interesting thing he is doing. So, there, are, there's lots you can do with his nickel 35. Honestly, I don't know if Megatron if has outside apprentice. If he does, then you always have that threat of the C route. But so far, he hasn't shown us a C route. So I like this man to man across the field. This clop is where we're talking about. Where is the ball? The ball is right here. Okay, clop is right here. So we'll go ahead and just dot that. The cloud flat will drop about 20 yards back ish. This is at its maximum, at its absolute maximum if you do not press. So at the most, this clop lot will stop right here. That is as far as he's going to go back. So if it's a corner out like Z spot, for example, where this guy's going to go ahead and run a vertical route, this guy's going to run a corner out, that Z spot is going to get over the clop lot default. So you, if you're going to send a blitz, you got to make sure the blitz gets home. He motions over his running back. This is a little tidbit. When they do that, if you're running match defense, your match defense turns to drop. We got the three receiver hook to wait to take away the tight end angle route, which is what he was expecting right there. As you can see right there, cloud flat brackets off that corner out. The, the sheds get home, luckily enough. Otherwise, you could very easily free from that corner. Now, third and 10, you blitz him. You still blitz him. You still blitz him in this situation. Always blitz. Don't back out from a blitz. Now, one thing you have to understand is anytime they motion out that running back, I expect to see route every single time because I think they're getting a read that I'm like, that they're thinking, okay, he might put an outside third there to go ahead and clear it out. Again, we go back into this empty bunch. You got to blitz. You have to know that was very unfortunate, both on defense and on offense, because the blitz got home, but the tackle actually managed to block two people at once. Man, I wish, I wish, I wish my line could block two people at once. That'd be fantastic. So, right here, he sends four man rush. This is just trying to get sheds. It's not trying to get any pressure home. Really, just an awful route combination. You had a curl route, and then you had a crosser going to that same side of the field. So, it makes it really easy for the user to go ahead and defend. So, just I don't know what he was thinking right there, why he did that, but just not the best decision. Again, we have this cloud flat out there. 
We have that cloud thought out there yet again. Plays a little flood concept really good. Uh, that might have been a little out route. Might have been corner. I wasn't paying attention too well. So again, motion mount. Probably a street corner. Maybe in receiver out. I think John Owell has hot route master. I'd be very surprised if he didn't. Very, very shocked actually if he didn't. But so far, he hasn't used a single C route. So if your opponents aren't using C routes, then there's no reason to, for you to go ahead and adjust at all. So right there, really just an unfortunate, this is just part of man DPS you have to accept. If you're gonna play man to man, your defenders are eventually gonna run into each other and it's just gonna be a touchdown. Some people say it's a rub route now. It's just an unfortunate bug of, it's an awareness issue with the defenders that's been in the game for quite some time. So right here, we got the Texas route. You can check there. What happens if pressure doesn't get home because you aren't blitzing users, you're not touching up at the line. One, two, three, four, five. If you touch the chip on the line, somebody's coming through. With all this time in the world, this is this is why I don't like this defense. This should this defense does not shed too well. With all this time in the world, ooh, that is just a smoking hot dot. All right. Same thing with the tight end. You could go ahead and freeform this right there. This out route. You can maybe, 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 maybe can freeform that to right about here, little baby dot. But we're looking for this corner out now. This guy, this little post route. So this is mesh um, bunch trail. Let me correct myself. This is bunch trail. So this guy's running a skinny post. You could probably freeform that right there if the user wasn't right there. But because the user's right there, that's not open. Corner out dot. That might have been high point pass. You got to be using high point passes this year, but. First and 10, we go back into gun tight. What I'm doing as far as audibles, I would have the cover four show two in because then you can check into that cover four show two. And if you understand how two by two works against a match defense, this really won't work too well. Now, the other thing I'd have is two man under specifically for these wheel routes on both sides of the field because all he's looking to do is just ag in by having two man out under and running an inverted cover three where you go ahead and put this guy at an outside third what i'm gonna call cover three man under okay cover three man take this guy's not quarters through deep and then this drop him there and in this case you use one of these two guys this is that will be a great way to go ahead and defend the ags like a fantastic way to defend ag defense it's great i love it Again, motions is running back over, but again, when you run that kind of defense, somebody has to be responsible for the running back. You can see right there, we've got our cloud flat. Talk about the cloud flat. Remember the cloud flat, what they do, they go ahead and drop about 20 yards to default, and then they play back down. That actually might have been an outside quarter. I'm not entirely sure what that was, but understandably so, Gucci gets a little upset. Now, here's the quick snap play you need to be aware of. This is something I was talking about earlier. This guy, normally, this is a hot route right here. This isn't how the play actually is designed. He runs a post corner. So that's the stock play and then everything else is, this is actually a hot route as well. This guy actually runs a little bit inside and then he breaks outside. This, everything else remains the same. Really, really tough play to go ahead and stop, especially if you're playing man to man, like somebody's gonna be open at any given point. Right there, he goes ahead and has the one on one with the tight end, high balls it, that should be a touchdown, but he gets a lucky overthrow, even though it says great accuracy. It's crazy how this works. So right here, he's gonna go ahead and send a blitz. In this situation, guys, third and 10, I talked about blitzing at the beginning of the video. You gotta mix it up. So you can't be predictable. You can't say, okay, every third long situation, I'm a blitz, blitz, and this is my user. I'm going to just send blitz every single time. No, because we will pick up on that. Okay. You face a good player. We will pick up on your tendencies. We're like, okay, bet you want to go and blitz us on third and 10 gets where we're going to block this blitz and we're going to go ahead and give us a touchdown. Thank you very much. So mix it up. But obviously, a nickel 35 wide, especially if you run these guys in like a contain. Okay, never ever do that. Like if you run a contain this pressure this pass rush will almost never get home and you might as well just say here's a free touchdown okay so mix up the blitzes don't always be consistent about it send six i think this is one thing that gucci really needs to do a lot better about is the amount of people that he runs now for the most part he's not really changing his coverage shell whatsoever which again in this situation dude oh it like pains me you're not running this defense this this cover three on this side will take away this route very well and all you have to do is if you bring this guy down i would press him and i'm blitzing this guy off the edge my user then this is my user right here my user goes straight over to here and we are just guarding that bad boy okay i don't even care we're just going straight to the flats i'm not going to hover if i do hover I'm gonna hover right here, and then I'm I'm just peeling straight off into the flats, no questions asked. Again, you can see if we went ahead and just did that, we wouldn't have to worry about this part of the field. And right there, he gets a one-on-one -on -one catch. 
guess what? Ag. Guess what? Route KOs aren't going to do a whole lot when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Zone KOs aren't going to do a lot when it's one-on-one. -on -one. This is why if you think they're going to go Ag defense, you have to play two-man under. I, there's just... There's no other defense better than to go ahead and play. Now, we get a little inside the John Beast defense right here. He is running the Nikola over Overstorm Brave. So, obviously, both players running cover zero, meaning more likely both of them are running probably one of the following. Deep route KO. I'm going to take a wild guess right here and say short route KO. And then, more than likely, pick artist and tip drill this is probably more likely what they're going to go ahead and run as far as it goes for abilities so we can expect a deep route kill short route kill a pick artist and a tip drill again just because ag defense that's that's pretty much it you got to be ready for that any game time so he goes into those gun tight slots hb weak from the bunch offset i don't know what playbook he is in don't ask me if i was to take a guess i'd say indianapolis colts Jalen Beast basically has to get a stop right here. This is where things get really tough. On defense in this situation, when you're playing behind like this, you have two time. Now you have one timeout left to go. It gets tough because they can both run the ball and they can pass the ball. They basically can do whatever they want. So you you can't pass commit in this situation because if you pass commit, all your everybody it makes no sense. We pass commit, everybody runs like they're stuck in quicksand. So you can't pass commit right here. I still like the idea of blitzing right here, but if I am going to blitz, I'm probably going to drop one of these linebackers into a flat on this side of the field and just leave this one guy blitzing, and then I'll use this safety and blitz my user or stand over it, or I'd blitz this guy, and then I'd drop this guy into like a middle third or something like that. Again, the variation's kind of literally endless. And the only reason I'd drop him into inside third is just in case he happens to run double post. This guy kind of goes out and then in. And then oftentimes what you'll see, I believe, is this guy is on a drag route. The solo side receiver is probably on the drag route. Tight ends on a wheel route. And then, well, I guess take, actually take that back. This guy, the solo side is running a C route. And then this running back is running an in-breaking route. So you got a meshing concept going over to the middle field. It's just a very good man-beating play this year. Again, he doesn't pass commit. He doesn't run commit. He just plays default commit. Okay, whatever you guys want to call it that. So right here. This situation, I I would probably pass commit. Okay, I'd be a little crazy. I'd, I'd gamble a little right here. I'd go ahead and pass commit just because I think he's going to go ahead and blitz. He's going to try to put us in a coffin and just in this game. So he, he I, you never really know if he pass commits or run commits. I would assume he just left it as default. So second 13. In these tight formations, there's always going to be a corner out. Like, there's always going to be a corner out from somewhere. <laughs> If you don't know that by now, I don't know what to tell you. So right there, good dot. That's going to be GG's though. So anyways, Gucci goes ahead and wins this game. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure you hit that subscribe button. This is John Beast versus So Not Gucci. Love doing these kind of breakdowns. This is one of my favorite things to do. Of course, we focus a lot on defense on this channel. As always, if you guys want to get access to more exclusive content, including my U-Trips offensive scheme, as well as Palms and Quarters defensive ebooks, as well as individual ebooks catered to individual offenses, such as Washington, as we were just watching actually these past two videos doing breakdowns on it. You can check that out on the Discord link below. There's going to be two PayPal links that get you access to that. One is including the monthly coaching, which is going to be $39.95 per month. The other one is going to be $9.95 per month which includes all just the discord channel stuff check those out links in the description as always we'll catch you guys in the next one hustle out hustle every single day i'll be making moves till i'm buried in my grave uh, to the system i don't want to be a slave i've been doing shit my way uh, or the highway and in the driveway is a nice range because i grind through the climb i invite pain you never hear me bitch now nah, i don't complain